Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. I'm Joe List. Hey, hey, Mark uh, Norman here. Yeah, that runs with ladies. Uh, <laughs> Mark Norman. <laughs> Got the runs right now. Do you? Ah, a little bit. I had a, I had too much uh, to drink this weekend, and that gives me the runs. Well, that could be COVID, dog. Oh, well, I'm, I'm nervous. I got to tell you there, Fatty. The uh, the numbers are in. Texas is up. Florida's up. It's all places I'm going. I mean, it's well, I've said it a million times. I don't want to get into it too beefy, too queefy, but I'll just say it one last time, maybe a few more times. We went from nine cases, not deaths, cases. We had nine cases. That's what I drank this weekend. 110,000 deaths in three months while quarantining. <laughs> and now we're opening. I mean, come on. I know we got a lot of fucking conservative nitwits watching, but you got to go, hey, that seems a little suspect, a little yeah. peculiar. Yeah, yeah. It, and it just sucks because that you make a good point, but it sucks because our business, aside from pods, is entertaining a room f- packed to the gills with human beings who are breathing. And sh- and laughing, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> and, and those queefing. bubbles. Yes, the sick, bubbles. The sick bubbles are everywhere. We're living in a bubble. But yeah, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a problem, but... I'm in Houston this weekend, uh, so come out and see me. I, I'm, I'm going to get crucified here, but I protested too, so I'm going to try to you know, blend them together somehow. I mean, well, the protest, it, there's hundreds of thousands of people in the street, and we already said this too, but the media, it, it's so insane that the doc, all not just the media, all the doctors agreed we got to quarantine and stay away, yeah. and if you sneeze, you're going to die, you're going to shit blood. And then we had the largest protest in the history of America, and the, the, the doctors are like, oh, they'll be fine. Yeah. They're outside. Yeah. Well, that, so that, I, don't, that, I don't know what's going on. That goes to how scared we are to say anything real or honest or... I don't know, somewhat factual because uh, if you if you go factual now, it's uh, the the great Joe List, the quote of the year, and you made it two years ago. Reason is edgy. There's your yes. next shirt. Yes, reason of reason of ability or uh, pragmatism is that's out. Prag is out. People hate prag. Prag is bad. If you if whatever sign and I, I people keep. Paint me in corners over here. A lot of painting. I hate the corner paint, and yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's kooky, and certainly we're going to have a ton of deaths. But I do also think the economy's fucked. we got to get back to work. People are killing themselves. People, are, I mean, I'm going mentally cuckoo over here. Yeah. And I've been traveling. I'm at my friend's house. I'm hiking. I'm walking. I'm running. I'm out and about. I'm meeting up with friends, but I'm still cuckoo. And, you know, the financial stuff. So we got to open, but... I just think we like a shitload of people are going to die, and I guess we're just going to have to. That's that's what's going to happen next. It looks like it. Uh, I mean, I think it's in a way this is evolutionary because it almost feels like it's weeding out the fats and the the smokers and the. You know, my lady had a good point. She was like, "Hopefully, at the end of all this, if there is an end, we will push health." Because obesity is getting killed, uh, you know, diabetes is getting killed, like old people are getting killed, but like, you know, maybe do some exercise and eat right. Don't be so susceptible to a, a, a virus. Yes, I agree. This is what Bill Maher has been talking about, who I love, but I can get shot just for saying you like the guy. I know. Uh, people hate him, but he had, a doc- he had a doctor on who said that only, I think, 12% of Americans are metabolically healthy. 
Like, wow. uh, yeah, wow. I'm like, there's no way I'm in that group. I'm eating cupcakes. I'm sticking the spaghetti up my ass. I'm eating French fries. My tits are getting big. But yeah, you do a little exercise. I mean, just walking to the train and a back from the train is, and you go up those stairs, that's more, not that you're taking the train now, but you know what I mean. That's more than uh, most people exercise in a week in, you know, Columbus, Ohio. And don't get me started on Columbus. People hate that guy. Yeah, well, he's a bad guy. <laughs> Let's yeah, be honest yeah. here. That guy's a real scumbag but i'm grateful glad he sailed over here yeah you know there's good and bad i mean the guy's a crazy savage who skinned people and wore them as hats but also you know he discovered america that's pretty good I, it's a weird thing that's a schultz had a great video about the whole thing about how like all we do is talk all day about injustice and how we got to be right and everybody's a piece of shit and if they are a piece of shit we got to ruin their lives but like you are using that iphone you are wearing that nike you like you're, you're giving in as well. We're all part of this big jigsaw puzzle of jizz. Oh, certainly. I jigsaw mean, some of, these, some of these celebrities, I'm like, they're like, income inequality. I'm like, well, you could give away some of your money. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, oh, they put uh, out another video. Oh, boy. Yeah, I didn't see. I just saw the million Woo. tweets about it. I can't watch it. I'm doing a pretty good job of avoiding the social medias for the most part. Yes. Yes. It's key, man. I, I got drunk all week and I went to the beach. I went gay, and I, I I feel reborn. I had a meltdown on on Friday. I'll tell you about it later. All right. Yeah, I feel I feel born again Christian because I've been in the ocean, and uh, you know me. I love the ocean. It heals, but heals. I gotta you gotta get in that ocean. So uh, I've been out in the uh, end of Long Island there, and uh, really swimming it up. I had the stand up paddle board, and that's Ooh. just fun because you're standing on the ocean. You're using your ass muscles. Yes. Yes. Kegel. And, and you swim upstream, and then you float all the way back. I had Sarah and I just on those surfboards, sitting next to each other, laying down, and the sun hitting you, the vitamin D shooting up your asshole, and just drifting down the river. And Take it feels good. D. You, you got to put it all away sometimes. And I know that's from a place of privilege and yada yada, but you turn the phone off, you turn the news off, and just chill out. Even if you don't have an ocean access, you're just sitting in your bed beating it off. Beating it off? It's pretty good. You got you got to uncharge or unhinge or recharge, whatever the fuck. You got to do yeah. something. Charles in you. charge. <laughs> ah, yeah, charge card. I'm with you there. Uh, wow, you haven't heard that in a while. Charge card. Man, that was no. remember the clunk clunk. Yes. San Diego Chargers. I remember working at <laughs> FYE, which was formerly Record Town for your entertainment it stood for. And every Dodge once Charger. in a while, the system would go down and would have to use one of those Yes. And then there was also the one that pressed down like an iron. It had like a handle. Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, that was fun. I wonder if the Amish are still doing the chunk chunk. I don't, that might be too advanced for them. They might have to. They don't even have credit cards, I don't think. I think they do because uh, Amish are killing it, by the way. They sell groceries. They sell uh, like wood and butter and jizz and all kinds of cows <laughs> and their daughters. And I think after a while, cash is being so obsolete that I think after a while you go, hey, hey, uh, Jedediah, you, you got to take this visa or, or it's no, you're shit out of luck, you know? So I think after a while, that, that's a compromise. Clunk, clunk. Right. So they sell jizz, you're saying? Because I've been yeah. using my own jizz to eat and make cookies. <laughs> well, hey, whatever Antoine's is teaching you, I don't know, but... Uh, <laughs> The, the, the Amish, they got the bulges, and people want bulges because you want to make a cow at home. Bulges? What? Yeah, bull semen, bull semen, because it's good to make it, you can put it in your cow. So you take, you buy a bull semen, what do they put it in a dish, a cup? What are we talking? I think you put it in a, like a turkey baster, and then you put that right up the, the cooter of uh, Mildred the, the moo cow, and you squeeze it, and it, it inseminates. Let me ask you this, because I was uh, dog sitting this past week, and I mean, picture me as a dog sitter. Forget about it. But oh god, the dog is a golden doodle, which is half golden retriever and half uh, whatever the fuck Yankee doodle. What is it called? A poodle. It's half poodle. poodle, half poodle, half golden retriever. And so evidently, poodles are like one of the smartest dogs. They're just smart as a whip, but. Golden Retrievers are the dumbest dog. So it's like ah, smart dumb. Interesting. Like yes. Uh, wow. I like that it, stuff. 
It's a cool dog, but it's it's a rich people dog, but she's a beauty and just sweet as pie, and she's been trained professionally the whole thing. And so I'm hanging out with her. I really fell in love with this thing. I'm rubbing her nipples and scratching her head, and you know we're making out. And How about whole, that? Yeah, the whole thing. But I started to wonder, because this dog loved me. I mean, it would run up in the morning and, and sniff my feet, and you know. And I was thinking, I wonder if I could... Now, I'm not going to do this, but I wonder if I could fuck this dog. <laughs> I'm sure you could. I mean, is it a lady or a dude? It's a lady. I mean, I don't mean physically. Like, I think she might be kind of into it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you put the tip in and uh, it won't get pregnant. I'm sure it's been neutered or spayed or clipped or snipped. So I think you're fine. And you jizz, in that, you, you jizz on her and it'll go right in the poodle hair. Well, here's the thing. It's not socially acceptable, and it's going to be, it would be damn near impossible to get consent. So I'm not going to do it because it feels a little illegal on multiple levels. But yeah, it, the, I'm just curious if the dog is so sweet, if I just laid her on her back, pet her for a while, spit on her cooch, and got in there, would she be receptive? Yeah, well, you got to think. You know, you don't get laid for f- five days. You kind of get a little jonesy. You kind of get a little pent up. And this dog's probably never been laid in its life, so I'm sure it's thinking about it. Yeah, it's thinking about it. And I'm a nice creature. I'm feeding her. I'm petting her. Yeah. If I, and then I just, like, just a missionary, you know, kind of rest my balls in the tail so it doesn't flip up and then hold those hind legs and yeah. see what comes of it. I I like it. I'm on board. I, uh... Yeah, you, do you give her a treat after, I guess? I think I think the sex is a treat, but I could give her another treat. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, in a way, because when you, when you put it that way, the dog's kind of a gold digger. It's kind of taking advantage of you by you're feeding it, you're housing it, you know, you're petting it, you're giving it warmth and entertainment, and yet you're getting no sex. Yeah, it's weird. And then I don't understand dog. I've never been a dog guy. I'm like, does she, I know they sniff, they have a good smell, and they can Big hear smell. things. Yeah, big but I think their vision. Don't you wish you could take a pill or whatever for five minutes, hear, smell, and see like a dog? Wouldn't that be interesting just to kind of get in their heads? Yeah, it would. I know they're colorblind. They don't see color, so they're very progressive. But uh, I think that they said the smell is 10,000 times ours. So they can smell a a snatch from, uh, you know, Jersey. And they, uh, they, of course, the hearing is great. So yeah, I think that would be amazing. But you'd also be like, ah, oh, god, this is brutal, because you know you're, you're living Queens. You'd smell a bunch of Greeks. True. Well, so here's the thing I was thinking about because I was playing fetch, and this dog will play fetch twice. It'll go get a stick, bring it back, and then maybe a second time. But after that, she moves on. Perfect but, fetch amount. But she's also she's, she's kind of a dum dum. So I'll throw the stick. She looks away. She loses sight of it. But then we'll sniff and sniff and sniff and find it. And I was wondering, I'm like, is she smelling my hand on the stick? Is that how ah, she does that? Interesting. Or does she know what the stick smells like? It's confusing. I think the stick. It's just she's not, because the 10,000 times I thought maybe my finger smells are just a just a, a nibble is on the stick. It could happen. It could happen. That's why, they, I mean, the dog can smell cancer. Really? Oh, yeah, like a cancer-sniffing dog. Nate Bergazzi used to have a great joke about it. It's like it's kind of awkward after the dog's, like, sniffing you and the doctor's like, you have cancer. Good boy, good boy, you know. <laughs> I uh, think I do remember that. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, they can they can sniff, man. They're on another level. Yeah, it was fun. So so I had a bit of an incident, though, with the dog sitting. Ooh. This is quite a dog tail here. Um, so that we go there and... Uh, you know, the owner's out of town, and we got the dog to ourselves, and we're, this is exciting, because it's Sarah and I, so it's like we're parents. We're taking it for a spin to see if we could, uh, you know, fuck a baby, but <laughs> we feed the dog and everything. Now, the dog we, comes up. Sorry. Were you nervous? Sorry. Were you no? I mean, were you like, were you against the idea? Did you hate it? Did you push back, or you just you accepted it? What happened there? Well, I'm not too nervous, because... I had just been there a week earlier with the owner, uh-huh. and it's Louie. I don't know why I'm acting like it's not whatever. Eh, so I'm there. That's a big dog, too. Big dog. Um, so I'm there the, the week earlier, and I've known the dog for years. So 
and she knows me and she likes me and she's pretty low maintenance because she's like a trained expense. This is like a rich people dog. So yeah. it's not a lot of whatever. She's not going to bite me. And then she has freedom in the backyard. It's a big backyard and she doesn't go anywhere. So you could just let her be. So it's pretty low maintenance. So I wasn't too worried. But you're always a little worried that this thing's going to fucking die while you're responsible. Of course. So night one, no incident. The only instruction was feed her breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then you got to cover her dog door. She's got a little doggy door. So you got to cover that at night so she's not out and about gallivanting. And you got to let her pee right before bed. Ah, I had that when I was a kid. So she's... We did some uh, some some trivia, which was fun, with a few comics, and that was delightful. I and mean, she had been out the whole time, so when it's time for bed, she had just been outside. So I'm like, I don't need to let her out. She just came back in five seconds ago. So I close the doggy door. We say good night. Fuck you. We go to bed, and about 20 minutes into sleep, you hear the oh uh, the whimper, the whimper outside the door. So I go whimper. L. And so Sarah wakes me up. I'm, I'm conked. I'm out. She wakes me up. She's like, the dog is crying. I go, I'll let her in because I was told that maybe she might want to sleep in our room. Sorry, this is a long tale. I'll get to the punches. Wagon. Let her in. I let the dog in. She's still whining, crying next to the bed. And now at this point, I'm half asleep. I took a Tylenol PM. I'm out. Yeah. But the dog is just standing there crying. So I pet her. And finally, I go, all right, she must need to go out again. I'll let her out. Now... It's 2.30 in the morning. This house is out in the middle of the woods. It's a huge house, like nine bedroom, three floor, creepy, old, built in 1900. So it's spooky. I got my flashlight on the phone. I'm in my pajamas. And like the flashlight, you're using the flashlight and you look over there and like your reflection's in the mirror. I'm like, oh, Jesus. God, the teeth. Then there's like, uh, you know, he's like an artist. So there's, what do you call that with clay when you make like a guy? Uh, sculpting? Yeah, like it's like little sculptures. A bust. Yes, a bust. It's, it's like a spooky bust. So I <laughs> put the flashlight on a spooky bust. I go, oh Jesus! There's your and, title. And then I'm like looking over here, and there's like a there's a Grammy Award. Oh gee, it's, it's just crazy looking in yeah. this old haunted house. And you're like, this is fucked up. So I let the dog back outside, and then she just disappears because it's like the woods. And it's dark, pitch black woods with one spotlight, which is creepy lighting. You know that oh, lighting? Yeah. Bad lighting. Just the one light, and you think everything, those eyes, is that, and it's, oh. and you know, we're city boys. You I'm like, I'm it. a city guy. I like the city. I like there's two people right above me. I like yes. there's two people right out there. There's people Same. everywhere. Yes. So I'm out in the woods, and now it's a pretty rich island so i'm not too worried you have to have that thing where you're like calm down there's nobody here we're, we're gated in whatever but the dog disappears i start to get spooked because it's like 10 minutes and then i'm like is she getting eaten should i go out there so i i turned into a huge pussy i called sarah i'm like sarah you gotta come down here and she's like what i'm like just come down here because i'm afraid to go look for the dog and then the door's like it shuts yeah. and i can't get back i'm like fred flintstone out there wait there's no leash no leash. I just let her run out there. Well, what if she never comes back? Well, that's the fear. That's what I start worrying about. Jesus. But I'm like, she's a disciplined dog. She costs $48,000. She was trained by fucking, you know, Clifford the Big Red Dog's dad or whatever the yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah. So Sarah comes down. She's got one eye open. She's like, what? what is this? I'm like, I just stand here so I can go look for the dog. So I'm in my underwear. I'm looking for the dog. Finally, I call her over. She runs over. She comes back in. I'm like, okay, now we're good. We go back to bed. Five minutes. I leave the door open a, a, a jar. F maybe a half hour later, I'm sound asleep again. She comes back in. This time, she's growling and crying. I've never heard a growl. Whoa. This is a first-time growl. Uh-oh. So FTG. So I go, all right, she must be anxious. So now I'm starting to have an anxiety attack because you start to think maybe someone's downstairs. Oh, God. Because you're like, why is she growling? Why is she crying? She doesn't need to go out. She was just out. Yeah. And I've slept in the house the week before. I spent a week there. This never happened. So she's behaving in a way that she's never behaved. So I'm like, okay, maybe something's got to be wrong here. I'm terrified now. So now Sarah made the joke. She's like, now I'm starting to believe in God. I've never believed in ghosts. I'm like, maybe there's a ghost. Like, we're changing our beliefs. 
Oh my like, God. <laughs> maybe you're someone a ghost broke, guy. Maybe someone broke in, so I'm like, fuck, should I go down there? What do I do? I don't have a weapon. What the fuck? Yeah. So you have to start calming yourself. There's no way anyone's in here. And there's a boop, boop, boop if the door opens. I locked all the doors. We're on fucking uh, expensive, exclusive island. So I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. Yeah. Something's wrong with the dog. So I'm like, she must be nervous. Louie's out of town. And I'm like, maybe she senses our anxiety. So I'm like, uh-huh. I'll pretend to sleep. Sarah, you go on your phone and she'll just eventually stop whatever. But I can't ignore her because she keeps being like, rrr, rrr. I've never yeah. heard her growl. She's growling. Oh my God. She's whimpering. I try to pet her. I try to put her in the bed. I try to leave her in another room. I'm, I'm trying to figure, I'm like, this is fucking insane. Something's going wrong. Finally, Uh-oh. she goes over to my luggage uh-huh. and just goes, hur, hur, blah, just pukes everywhere, all over my what? dirty clothes, a little puddle of shit. She just pukes green dog. She had to puke. Oh, my God. What What do you think it was? Did you feed her some jizz or cookies? No. Well, I've seen her throw up before. I guess they eat grass or a leaf or maybe she's sick and they haven't gone to the doctor or whatever. Uh-huh. But she threw up twice right next to some of my clothes, then a little pile right next to it. Then she drive heaved next to my shoe, which I thought was going to be payback for me shitting in a shoe 20 years ago. Uh-huh. And as soon as she puked, went back in the other room and just... Conked right out, never a problem again. But here's the thing with dogs. You're playing, uh, what's that, charades. Because I'm like, maybe she's anxious. Maybe she yes. misses her dad. Maybe someone's here. And right. I think the whole time the dog's like, no, I got to puke, you fucking idiot. Wow. But hey, I also brought you outside, you twat. Why didn't you yak it up in the lawn? I think maybe she yacked once, came back ah. and had to yak again. or what? I don't know if she got the flu or corona or, or what. But it ended up being a puke after that. Problem solved, but man, it was scary and exhausting. And afterwards, I just felt like, oh, I just passed out because I was so drained. Yeah, I I think we're in a similar boat because everybody wants to be a mom and a dad and a parent. And we kind of are like, ah, do I want kids? I don't know. And this is why, because we analyze. We get deep in. We, we try to figure everything out. We're emotionally invested. That was a dog puking. That's nothing. That's a That's a blip on the chart. And you're freaking out. I feel that way completely, and I kept saying that we were dog sitting because the, every time the dog disappears for five minutes, I'm like, "Where? Where's the dog? I got to go find the dog." Yes, and yes. Imagine when, he was a dad. I know. I, I feel that way all the time. When I'm at the beach, I see a little kid. I would be the worst anxiety shit dad, and I would put all of it on the kid. The kid would grow up to yes, be a yes. big fucking nerd loser. Same, same here. And maybe I want kids one day, but it, it's all it's more me me problems that I'm worried about fucking this kid up than I am about having a kid. I feel like I could have a kid, but I was just with my, my girlfriend's family. They just had a baby, and they'd be like, you want to hold the baby? I'm like, get that thing away from me. I hate it. I'll drop it. I'll eat it. I'll bite it. I'll kick it. Get it away from me. Yeah, see, a baby somehow is a little easier because you just hug it, you hold it close, <sighs> you, you lick its forehead, whatever, but these little kids, and what's funny is like I don't – have those fears so much for myself like we're on the boat i'm diving we're going full speed i'm jumping into that whale tail and you know we're paddle boarding the whole thing yeah because i know i know my alleys i know what i'm doing but with the kid you feel so helpless and what about the idea of your kid getting bullied can you imagine imagine your kid comes home with his you know underwear ripped and a pile of dog shit in his hair and he's like tommy did it i'd Uh. kill myself Oh, of course. I mean, I, I I get sad from a guy in a movie getting fucked with, and that would just ruin me. And I I feel like I'd go hunt the kid down and and fight him or kill him or blow his mom or something. I feel the same way. I'm like, that's the only time I can fathom doing physical, like true physical yes. damage to somebody. Yes. Is the idea of them like hurting somebody. Right. Right, yeah, I see my girlfriend get kicked, and I go, ah, how about that? Her vagina's bleeding. But if my kid got kicked, I would lose it. I've, I've told the story before, maybe, but uh, when I was, like, nine years old, I was hanging out at this friend's house, Drew, and his dad, Yuck. it was a bit of an artsy, poor family, and they were a little kooky, and the son had some issues. But one time, he we were playing football or something in the front lawn, and this other kid got into it with Drew, and they're going at it, and they start fighting, and the kid punched Drew, and he had glasses, and the glasses went flying. And the dad, we didn't know, was watching from the porch. And he goes, 
that's it. Your ass is grass. And he ran over and like tackled the little kid. We had to pull. We we're like, Mr. Johnson, stop. We're like he was going to kill this kid. Yeah, I get it. And that's why, I mean, obviously, like, and we joke a lot, but like kid crimes and abuse against children is just the worst thing in the fucking world because they're so innocent and uh, helpless and yeah, yeah, brutal. But um, anyways, we got through it. Dog was fine and uh, all good. But man, it was scary. Like I was having anxiety like I haven't had in a long time. And also the dog's anxiety and Sarah's anxiety, it all escalates. You're, you're picking up everyone else's anxiety. Right, right. Yeah, and, um, and it's nighttime. You're in a weird area you don't know about. It's woods. You're not a dog guy. Yeah, you're on PMs. And those huge houses, I, mark my words, if I ever get wealthy, I will not buy a big home. I like to feel nestled. Those two floors, three floors, the idea of a human being, and I, I don't have any ghost spirit thing, a human being could hide in your home is the most fucked up, terrifying thing to me. Okay. We're back. We had some testicle difficulty. All right. So, Mark, when you froze, and you might have caught some of this on your recording, but I didn't hear it. You were just going into a rant about something. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, sorry. Testicle diff. What the hell was I talking about? Uh, shit. What was I talking about? Do you well, remember? Was, we talked about the dog. Well, we talked about the dog and then the big houses. I, yes. I, if, if I was rich, I wouldn't buy a big house. Yes, yeah, same. Uh, I don't like it. I had a big house as a kid. I'll tell you, it was so scary living in that house when I was a kid because we had a huge alarm system that would go, woo, 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 and it would go off at like 2 a.m. So you're just like, well, there's somebody downstairs. That's that. You know, there's, there's a guy like... You just picture some big guy with a boot kicking the door in or breaking the window and, like, going through your mom's jewelry box and her panties. And, you know, my dad had to go downstairs with a bat. And, you know, I'm, I'm eight. The whole thing was horrific, and it's kind of scarred me, I think. Yeah, it's terrifying. We had woods uh, just in our backyard. Like, it was a backyard, and then there was woods there. And it was yeah. always so creepy that someone could come from the woods and sneak right up and come right in the backyard. And, uh, you know, it was a small house, but, uh, yeah, it was frightening. And I remember one time there was an episode of Webster where he had, like, he was watching TV and there was, like, two, like, schoolmates snuck in and razzled him or something. But it, it freaked me the fuck out. Oh, my God. That's terrifying. Yeah. The Webster. woods, I, I, even at your house now, I see those woods when I've slept at your place, and I look out that little window in the back, and I'm freaking out. Yeah, the woods are spooky, and it's so funny because people are like, ah, oh, the city's scary, or the, I could never live in the city, and I'm like, the city? Like, if I started screaming right now, I mean, this probably, even just talking at this level, there's about yes. 48 neighbors that can hear me, and they're like, this guy's a piece of shit psycho, but that to me is comforting. I completely agree, and uh, I'm with you. I like the city. People go, there's 800 people on top of you. I'm like, good. I like seeing a bunch of people I don't have to talk to walking around. Yes, I agree. And uh, I'll tell you something else I like. Hit me, fatty. I like Blue Chew. I love, yes. I love sex. You guys know how much I love sex. You know how much love Mark loves sex. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Blue Chew, the first, that's right, the first chewable dick pill. While we're all stuck at home, what's something we could all use a little more of? Human contact. But also you want sweet, sweet lovemaking. And folks, it ain't easy <clears throat> having lovemaking if you got a nice soft cock. You're going to need a nice hard cock. And the way to do that is through Blue Chew, the first ever chewable Blue Chew it's something you uh, you can really sink your teeth into. Blue Chew has the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since it's chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill, so you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. It's fast and easy. Oh, yeah, I love them. I, I, they're getting me through quarantine because uh, my libido's through the floor and I'm gay and my lady's uh, on a rascal. But 
I love them. Get them now. Right now, we've uh, we got a special deal for our Tuesdays out there. Visit BlueChew.com and get your free shipping. First shipment is free when you use our special code Tuesdays. Just pay $5 for the shipping, and it's all yours. You get a whole free shipment. Again, that's B L U E C H E W dot com promo code Tuesdays to try it for free. Just got to pay for the envelope. That's pretty good for a boner, baby. Bluechew dot com. Finally, a website that can give you an erection. Oh yeah. And we also want to talk about OnlyFans, folks. OnlyFans dot com slash Tuesdays. Hey, hey, it's me, your pal, Joe List. Oh yeah, Mark Norman here. Yeah, you probably know us from our hilarious comedy specials, TV appearance, and legendary tweets, and of course our hit podcast, Tuesdays with Stories, but did you know we are we are now on OnlyFans, aren't we, Mark? Yeah, we are. We are on OnlyFans. That's right, baby. Get on it ASAP. That's right. Every week, Mark and I are getting together at OnlyFans.com slash Tuesdays to discuss things that would make any grandmother blush, and I don't even feel comfortable talking to you about it right now. Oh, yeah. We're getting naked, baby, emotionally at OnlyFans.com slash Tuesdays, and the best part is it's all free, folks. Check it out. Thanks. Bye. We love you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, go check that out for sure. Check it out, folks, because uh, it's been fun. We've been talking about porn and talking about our first porns and our VHSs and our boners and our little dicks, so it's uh, it's cute. Yeah, a lot of porn stuff, and uh, I've been having a great time now. I got some other little things to get into, but I feel like the folks, they haven't heard about your trips. You've been out and about and over and out. Well, I talked about Dallas, right? I talked about uh, me going down to the improv there. We yeah. covered that. It was glorious. I'm still scared of the blowback. Who knows what these uh, these folks are mad about? I'm I'm COVID 101, patient zero confidence. But uh, I'm going to Dallas, uh, Houston this weekend. But this weekend, the one that just went by, I went to Cape Cod. Saw the ladies, uh, new niece, and uh, you know, just such a beautiful place. And Cape Cod, it's it's like a shitty, it's like a sh- it's like Oprah. Where you, it only looks good like once every ten minutes a year. Oh, I see. Does that make sense? It does. Well, what was it like there? Was it because they're just starting to open a little bit? Was it crowded? Was it not crowded? Well, uh, I was hanging out with her, her old friends, and her. I guess you'd say her sister's husband's friends, and it's a bunch of cops and firefighters from from Boston and, and surrounding areas. So they're just on the beach. Freewheeling, and I gotta tell you, after a couple of white claws and a hand job, I started talking to these cops. You know, you're with them for eight hours on a beach, just soaking in the rays, and I started being like, "So, what do you think of all this uh, protest?" And and they were incredibly mature and like, "Hey, I get it. People are angry. You know, they got families. They're upset. They're allowed to protest. They can do whatever they want." I, I hate bad cops. I hate the the chauvin guy, the neck on the the knee on the neck. But um, you know, I got I got a family too, and I got to support them. And my dad was a cop, and I'm not a bad guy. And I wish they knew that. And it was it was very mature. I was shy. It was almost like he had a little little press release ready. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I, one of my best friends and a Tuesday is a state trooper in Massachusetts. And he's one of the best people I've ever met in my life. He's smart as a whip. He's got stinky farts and a huge yeah. head physically, but uh great guy. And he's like a progressive liberal and very smart. And he has a law degree and he wants to be of service. And he also, they, he's like, yeah, we were all trashing that Chauvin guy. He's like, that guy's a yes. fucking moron. He went against protocol. He's a fucking idiot, and we hate him, and yeah, fuck that totally. guy. We hope he gets locked up, and it makes us look bad. And um, he's a criminal. That guy's a, a criminal. So hopefully he goes to jail. And yeah, yeah, I know cops that are good people, and people want to say that that's impossible, and they're whatever, but they are human beings, and... A progressive liberal thing would be to have empathy for all human beings. I feel that's uh, that's how I was brought up. But yeah, it's it's very strange how 
how narrow minded we we get. You know, it's just like this is what we're against. Fuck it. And he was, you know, joking about defunding the police. He's like, I, I don't know how that's gonna work. And look, I I get the managing of money in police, but. You can't abolish police. That's insane and childish and uh, irrational. And, uh, you know, we're, this whole generalization of, like, we're all evil is bad news. And no one ever talks about the good stuff we do. And uh, I, I agree because, you know, to call all black people criminals is crazy. And they go through a ton of shit. And then to call all cops bad is crazy. Even, like, Karen, calling with these white women Karen. Look, I've been yelled at by cunty white ladies my whole life. I was a skateboarder. You know, uh, excuse you, put that down, uh, young man. I mean, that, that was my whole life. There's a lot of cunty white ladies. There's a lot of nice white ladies. There's a lot of bad cops. There's a lot of nice cops. There's a lot of bad black people. There's a lot of good black people. There's a lot of bad whitey. There's a lot of good whitey. You know, it, it's it's nuanced. It's, it's so simple, and yet we got to just... Take down a whole group, even though the whole point of the protest is to help a group and make people realize that we're individuals. But then we call out people who groups who aren't. It's it, it's all topsy turvy and it's all hypocritical, and nobody can see that. It doesn't seem that hard, and I'm not that smart, so why can I see it? It's kooky dooky, topsy turvy, wacky Wednesday, but. Um yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna all shake down, but. Uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but it definitely feels like the fabric of society is coming unglued, and it's uh, frightening. But I tell you, I've been doing a lot of meditating and reading and uh, avoiding social media, and uh, maybe, again, that's uh, a privileged thing to do or whatever, but uh, I feel okay. It's the end of the world as we know it, and uh, what can you do? I, I feel all right. I, I feel fine. Yeah, no, I'm with you, and... Just a couple things about the 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 trip. So, had a meltdown. Uh, my alopecia's back. You can't really see it because it's not it's not that big yet. But every time I'm incredibly stressed out, my beard hair starts falling out. Oh no! Yeah, it's like this weird little tick I have, and I noticed it one day. I had like a you know dime sized circle coming out of my uh, facial hair there. And I, I started kind of having, you know, the first time it happened to me when I was 18 or whatever, I was like, what's this about? Then I realized I had exams. I wasn't getting into college. I was failing out of school. My dad hated me. I was a drunk. I got a DUI. So that's when it happened before. Then it happened like five years ago with my special came out and Schumer and I had a million uh, disagreements and I was trying to buy an apartment and da 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 and all this shit. And now I had it again and I had to sit down and go, why am I having this? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to rent my apartment. I'm buying a new apartment. How much, money's not coming in. Uh, I'm going on all these trips, COVID, po protests. So I had to, like, sit down and figure all that out. And I had a, a huge meltdown because I went on this trip. And I'm like, why am I going on this trip? I have to get my financial shit in order. I got to, you know, figure out how to rent this apartment. I got to figure out what am I going to do? How am I going to pay this nut I have in mortgage? And it all hit me. And, uh... I cried in the in the in the uh, bathroom at her fucking sister's house. It was horrific. Nerd. I know. I know. It was two in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I'd taken like five sleeping pills. They weren't knocking me out. I'm in another weird bedroom. Uh, there's weird sounds. Uh, the bed sucks, and I just lost it. And I just went into the guy's bathroom and and wept like a like a white lady in a in a Kmart. Well, a good weep is very healthy. It's good for you. It means you're connected to something. I mean, that's healthy. I, I love a good weep. It really, I feel like I'm on the prefaces of, I don't know what that word is, crying all the time and I can't get in there. So if you can yeah. get it triggered and get it going, that's good. But I've said it to you a million times for 10 years. I mean, you've got to say no and unplug some of this shit. You, I know. You put, it's all pressure and stress from yourself. You, you do it to yourself. You have this idea yep. of what a comedian's supposed to be, of what a man is supposed to be, and it's the wrong idea on both things, <laughs> and you got to just fucking chill out. I would, I would recommend a dose of 24 hours, no social media. You feel like you're supposed to tweet four times a day. Right. Get rid of that. Throw that out. You won. You got 175,000 followers. Take the foot off the gas. You can put it back on the gas. That's the thing about gas. You can press the gas. Then you put the brake on. The gas still works. Right. You take That's your foot off the gas. The it's gas is still there. 
It's not about winning. I didn't. I'm not trying to win anything. I just. It's a fear of. Are they going to forget about me? Is it? Uh, what if I tweet this and I, you know, one more person finds out about me and I sell another ticket and now you know whatever. It's just, it's just. Uh, it's. I'm just doing little tick. I'm ticking away, ticking away at more, more success or more exposure or whatever the fuck it is. I, I don't know. It's just a fear. And plus, our job is so. I mean, we sit on a podcast, we talk. I mean, we're good at it, and it's fun, and we got people listening, and we go on stage, and it's fun, and and, and we were skilled. Uh, so I think I feel guilty sometimes that our jobs are so fun, and that, feel, that causes me to work more. Sorry. I feel that way also. I feel guilt all the time, but I've been really working on that because... Um, you don't need to feel guilt. You've worked very hard for what you have, and um, you gotta. I think you gotta question your um, intentions and, and do you really want this or what your um, wants and, and needs are? Because it feels yeah. like you have built in your head. I have to work this hard. I have to get this amount of things out, and I have to do this, and I have to do that. And you don't have to do. Any of those things, you could. Those are still good things to do. It's a valuable use of time to create, but this pressure to create throughout the day and every day, and to um, whatever, go on these trips or say yes to everything is. Uh, it starts to have um, an adverse effect. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there's an I, old. I... There's there's an old Buddhist saying: Don't just do something. Sit there. Oh, that's good. That's very like, Groucho. Yes, like you're, you're. I feel like you live your entire adult life. I didn't know you as a child. With the opposite, I should be doing something. Like we're in yes. a car, and you're working out while you're a passenger in a car. And so, in a way, you're never fully connected to what you're doing because you're always right. doing multiple things. Yes, yes. Here, here. I, I. It's so funny too because I, I have such a fear, and I think you have this too of disappointing people or letting people down or. I don't know, being a nuisance. You know, you never want to be a nuisance. And so I had to tell the lady I'm laying next to her. It's, it's 5 a.m. I haven't slept that night. It's 5 a.m. And I'm just, I know we have a to get on a bus or we're going to the beach, so we're going to get up and early and go. So I'm just like, all right, now you're going to get two hours. If you fall asleep now, you'll get one hour, you know. And I just told her, I go, I can't go to the beach. And she's like, what? Why are you waking me up at 5? You can't go to the beach. I was like, I have too much shit to do. I, I need to be alone. I need to think. And she was like, all right. And in my head, I thought it was going to be a big fight, but she was like, okay, whatever you got to do. You're a weirdo and, and a bit of a puss and a, and a homo, but uh, I hear you. And that was it. That's good. I mean, that's a good partner. I mean, that's and that's good for you for asserting boundaries. A lot of this is boundary issues and yes. um, expectations of yourself that you create for yourself. Right. And um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's tough. But it's, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no no! I, that was but I was but I don't want to turn into Doctor Phil here about the whole thing. But uh, if things aren't going to be that bad. I think things uh, they usually turn out somewhat okay. I mean, sure you get hit by a car at any moment, or get cancer, or COVID, or anal. But uh, yeah, I, I I the expectations are more her, uh, harmful to your system than what the actual outcome. Yeah, hundred percent, and um. I don't know. I th I think that and I've been saying this to you for years. I think you can still accomplish your goals and your needs without um, pushing so hard to right. um, be in max physical condition and have tweets and an act and money and a relationship. Those are all good things. But if you put the pressure, if I don't have one of these things, I'll be failing. Is what yes. it feels yes. like, and um, then your self esteem is based on these things that, in the end, don't matter as much as um, you're thinking they do. I think, as opposed right. to um, your relationships and in your enjoyment of all of those things. Which, not to say you don't have great relationships and enjoyment, but I think you could get more out of those things if you just um, relax your expectations of yourself because it's only you putting this pressure on yourself nobody else no. nobody else is like hey where the fuck is Mark's tweets today <laughs> I know you're right 
people are grateful for them. Nobody else is like, hey, what the f- I think I see an ounce of fat on Mark. Right. Nobody, nobody else is like, uh, you know, why isn't uh, Mark, you know, eating his wife's pussy well or whatever the whatever else there is. She's saying um, that, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, she, just her. I don't care how you eat her pussy. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, the, no, you're right, and I got to work on it. And actually, one of the good things about COVID is uh, you can take a minute and try to fix some shit in your own life, and you you have a like a, a loud break. Yeah, completely. I mean, this has changed my approach to life. That's why I feel so good, because it, it allowed me... I mean, I'm basically talking to myself with all of this stuff. We have very similar things. It's all for me. And it took me a long time to realize that all of this is my expectations of what I think someone is supposed to be, of yes. being the most zen and creating the most material and making as much money as I can, can do. And we create this for ourselves. And I think f- for me personally, and I think also you, there's this idea that if I can get all these things and get to these places, then I'll have the approval of my parents and these kids from high school and those people and this comic and you end up creating all these things for um, other people's perception of you instead of just being okay with who we are as people if we never accomplish anything, if we never have another special or another late night, we're valuable just as the nature of us being who we are, human beings and special as individuals that are different than any other human being. And that goes for everybody. Here, here. Wow. Well said. Boy, somebody snip it. That was a great little run you had there. Well, if you enjoy this, check out Mindful Metal Jacket, everybody, because that's the whole show. It was like we did a little preview, but... Um, Is that... Which, wow, that's good stuff. Yeah, well, it's... I get it, and I have the same issue. It's like, you spot it, you got it, as we say. I'm like... Right. It's easy for me to recognize that, because I have the same problems and issues, and I have to stop. This is the great thing about mindfulness, is to stop and realize, oh, I'm doing this because of that. I'm behaving this way because... I'm trying to create this thing that I think a person is supposed to be. Right, right. Or a comedian and, is supposed to be or whatever. And, you know, put that on top of being in a house with your lady's family that you don't know and don't really gel with. And, you you know, the whole weekend is you kind of just making it work and trying to come up with things to say and, you, you know, not be yourself too much. So that that's another uh, part. And that was another thing I had to tell her, like, look, you can't eat, she can't eat dairy. And so, you know, we're always working on that. I can't be around people all the time and be normal. So you got to deal with that. That's part of the, 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 the package here. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what being in a relationship is, is sort of accepting people's thing, what they are, and then creating boundaries and assert I just burped into the microphone and creating things that I need you to change some things you're like I need you to be able to change this or else this yeah. isn't going to work right right and, and then you have to kind of have the wisdom to know the difference in those things like obviously you can't be like I need you to consume dairy that would be ridiculous <laughs> but you might be yes. like I need you to give me space or tell me I love me or I need you to touch my balls on Wednesday or whatever whatever yes. it is um, yeah, I'm I'm a Thursday guy, but I get it. <laughs> um, but anywho, yeah, I mean, I think it might serve you to uh, take three days off from social media, looking at it and, and tweeting and Instagramming and all those things, or even opening a notebook, just fully turn off. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And uh, well, here's, here's a nice little nugget. I, um, you know, I'm Matt Salakuse, buddy of mine, I said, hey, I, we used to go to breakfast like, yeah, once every two weeks at a diner and just bullshit, hear about his family, he hears about my bullshit, and he likes comedy and he loves all that shit. So we talk about that, and you know, obviously we can't do the diner thing because uh, the the uh, world's on pause. But I just said, hey, can I come to your house or uh, let, let me? I'll take the hog up to you and we'll just walk around. He said that would be great, and it was so nice. And we got a beer, we went to the pier, we just talked and bullshit and made fun of everybody. And then he, I, I was about to get on my hog and he saw a Revel scooter parked. Have you seen these? Oh yeah, I know the Revel. The helmet's a little creepy, but other than that, it's cool. Yeah, he didn't put the helmet on, much like myself. But uh, Revel, for, for those of you who don't know, 
it's much like a city bike where you can rent uh, with your phone. You can rent a parked moped and just drive around the city, park it, and then some other chooch who has a Revel app can just pick it up and use it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's like a yeah shared. It's like I don't know Airbnb, but for scooters. Yeah, it's like a zip car kind of thing, and this guy didn't know how to ride a scooter really, but he got on it and. And uh, we rode together like a couple wild hogs, and it was adorable. We're going down to Hell's Kitchen, you know, two douchebags just uh, putting down 8th Avenue. Yeah, I think, well, that's a beautiful thing, and that's part of what's gone on with all this quarantine thing is less um, relationships with people, like physically. Being yeah. with somebody is is meaningful. So, I mean, I especially feel bad for all the, the gays out there, the twos gays, that are alone during this, or have been alone during this thing. Here, here. Brutal. So true. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah, that was a nice, queefy moment, and uh, just ride next to a friend. It's a w- weird bonding experience. You know, the wind is in both of your thinning hair, and uh, we're <laughs> farting, and it was it was nice. Yeah, that's a beautiful, those are those uh, special moments. It's nice in when there's moments in life that you can recognize as they're happening. We are like, hey, yes. this is something. I got something going yes. right here. Completely. And then you have those moments where you go home and you feel better. Like you're like, oh man, that, that, it's almost like when you go to the gym and you're like, I'm glad I went. That was hell, but I'm glad I did it. And you kind of have a relief feeling. I had that after that bike ride and I had that after this weekend. Yeah, it's good for the soul. I mean, th- this is the thing. This The soul needs nourishment as well. You need food yes. for your body, of course. You're like, let me get some spinach and cram that in my ass. Let me drink a, you know, a naked juice, whatever. I need that. But your soul needs nourishment. You need these uh, relationships, physical touch, and uh, all of those things to feel valued. You need, you need uh, time away, meditation, all this stuff. You need to nourish your, your soul, your cockles. Here, here, yeah, and I had my cockles uh, on my lady's chin the other day, and we took the Amtrak back from uh, two and back from Beantown. Um, boy, you're really putting it out there. You're you're flying, you're on the train, you're meeting and greeting. Oh, oh, shit! You're right. You're right. Forget it. No Amtrak. But I think you got the immune system. I mean, eventually, this is what we've been talking about. Eventually, we're gonna have to let our immune systems play a role in this fucking thing to get back to it. Yeah, and, we can't live indoors for the next 10 years. Yeah, the old bags are going to have to hide out and, and have a pillowcase on their heads, and us young whippersnappers are going to have to just risk it. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, boy. Weird uh, time. God, I hate this. We just need a, a goddamn cure or whatever. What do you call it? A vaccine. Yeah, it's a bummer or uh, the mass herd tits, whatever the fuck that is, but the who? I don't know. The, the herd, the herd immunity. Oh, heard Amber heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, but we'll see. But I guess I think it's all just going to be personal risk. What you're willing to risk and everything, I guess. But I don't I know, know. But it's it's willing. You know, by me going here, am I risking someone else's life? And you know, that's that's when you start freaking out. Like, oh shit, I, I I'll take a kick in the nuts, but I don't want to kick someone else in the nuts. Yeah, exactly. That's where it gets a little tricky, but I don't know. Sarah flew last week back from Houston, and we've been having anal, and she's been pegging me, and so far we're <laughs> we're fine, but I don't know. I got I got no answers anymore. It's so fucking yeah. confusing. It's all, it's the whole thing's been so mucked up, but. Yeah, and everybody's got to stop acting like they have answers. You know, the, the CDC changes and flip-flops every 10 minutes, so what, what the fuck do you know, uh, Susie Joe? Yeah, Susie Joe sucks. Yeah. Um But yeah, we'll be all right and if we or we won't be and that'll be fine too. Yeah, we'll just deal yeah, with it. yeah, yeah. Either way though, when whatever happens, I cherish the little things again just getting on that beach you're like, "Wow, the fucking beach. Look at this and uh, this ice cream shop's open. Holy shit. Oh my god, look at that ice cream cone dripping down my chin. It tastes so good and it's like you're Amish, you know? You're like, oh, wow, look at this. Everything's exciting and new and weird. Yeah, you need it. We went for, I was out in Long Island. We went to ice cream every day, me, Louie, Sarah. We took the Jeeps and there's no, uh, you know, the air is just flipping around everywhere. There's no roof or whatever the fuck. There's no doors. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a, it's got like those roller coaster doors. It's like a black bar that clinks in. You know the clink? Ooh. 
I love a clink. We got the roller coaster clink, the dogs in the back seat, her tongue going. Ooh-wee. By the way, a dog tongue, not a bad tongue. Great tongue. Like, I felt if I lost my tongue and we replaced it with the dog tongue, I could, I'd do fine. Oh, you'd be a killer with the oral. You could. You, you ever watch? Do yourself a favor. Watch a dog tongue scoop up some water in slow motion. Unbelievable. I'll get right on that, but uh, I was watching it in fast motion, and I was enjoying it, but we were going for ice creams every day, and you ever have this where, like, every day I was getting a medium chocolate chip, and then, like, day five, I was like, you know what, make it a large. Yeah! And I'm just eating ice cream for, like, 25 minutes, and I'm a fat fuck. I don't know if it comes up in the camera. I got home. I got a smart scale. I weighed myself, plus 2.4 since the last time I weighed myself. Wow. That's Two a, and a half pounds. That's a heft. Wow. Like, are, you, are you showing? I'm, oh, I'm fat. I mean, I have that thing right now where it goes from pelvis to like, it goes like, like there's like a 40 degree angle. It's bad news bears. And I was pretty ripped up like before quarantine because I was going to the gym and doing this and that. And now yeah. I'm a chubster, but um, I feel like I'm in an area where I can get it back pretty quick. That's the thing about like, chubster is fine and, and squeezable and husky and all that's good stuff. But to me, it's getting back to normal and then not just getting back. You got to go back to zero and then you got to get ripped up again. So it's to me, it's it's the uh, the journey back is almost not worth the the plump. Well, it's not because that ice cream is just it's so fun and you're it's all science in the brain. Your brain. Yes. triggers the thing like you're like oh we're gonna go get that ice cream i love it and yes. it becomes like a reward system like i'm like at that same time of day i'm like oh let's go it's sun setting i like this lighting let's yes. all get in the car let's all go right. and <laughs> you're all having it together but anyways it was a great time we went out on the boat i swam in the ocean we dropped anchor sarah and i i got a great photo of us from behind you know where we're jumping into the water together it looked Ooh. like that Whatever that production company is where the guy's jumping yes. in the water. Yeah, off the dock. Yes, it's just beautiful, and yeah, it's it, life is uh, is good if you want to make it good for yourself. And again, maybe that's a place of privilege, I'm saying, but um, whatever the fuck. No, it's a, you got you to gotta choose. These, these queefs out there, they all bitch and moan, and as do I. I'm, I'm crying in a stranger's fucking laboratory. But uh, I think you got to choose to be happy. You got to make it a choice and uh, the right to choose and women's abortions. But you got to really just suck it up and go, this is how I'm going to live and this is what I'm going to think. And you got to stop worrying about uh, outside shit and worry about your own shit. Yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be okay. And um, love is the answer. And my tits are nice and my pubes are gray. I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but uh, as the dude said, take her easy. There it is. I like <laughs> it. The dude abides. But uh, we gotta we gotta wrap this thing up. I mean, this is an epic episode. This is an epic episode. Epic episode. I like it. I like it. Spooky house. What was it? Spooky. Spooky clink. I can't remember what it was, but that was a hell of a title, Shelbo. Sorry about the uh, the jizz on the lens there with the Wi-Fi, but this I gotta get out of this this shoebox. Yeah, we had a little testicle difficulty. I don't know how you have Wi-Fi is in an issue that I mean, uh, Wi-Fi issues in a house that size. I feel like the Wi-Fi I, would be coursing through your veins. I think I'm blaming uh, what do you call it, Con Ed? Those cunts over there at Cunt Ed. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it goes out like eight times a day. You got to unplug it. It's like a Nintendo. I'm blowing on it. I'm eating it out. It's brutal. <laughs> well, no big whoop, uh, Shelby. We got Shelby, the the the, the king of editing here so he's gonna slap it together we'll get a set a different camera angle for you in the middle of the episode which will be fun and nobody cares they're grateful so uh yeah i just wanted to tell people to go check out the patreon i feel like we haven't plugged it in a little bit we're still rocking over there we're doing a bonus queef every week there's one from every week of quarantine plus there's a ton backtracked there's years ago interviews with chris allen um fuck it all kinds of old boston comics we've sat down with a lot of people Sarah and I are doing foreign film friends and um, all the live shows are on there. There's a ton of shit on there. You can get it for five bucks a month. Use your stimulus package. Yes, package. Put it in my mouth. I agree. The live show, Burt Kreischer, Nikki Glaser, Chris DiStefano, Ron Bennington. I mean, these are 
jam-packed lineups, folks. And, uh, yeah, as you said, once a week, we got shirts out there, uh, Live, Laugh, Queef, and uh, the other ones, the old vintage OG. And, you know, I got I got guys hitting me up all the time uh, about, uh, hey, can you sign a photo of you two? And, and I'm like, yeah, send it over. We'll sign it and send it back. So... Get creative. You, you want something, you know, if you don't want to queef, but you want something else, hit us up. Let's talk about it. Yeah, we appreciate the support. It's been really nice. I think we got the best fan. Everyone says that. I think we have the best fan. We have kind, thoughtful fans, I think. Yes, yes. I think we're a good outlet for our our nice, peaceful fans because uh, we'll say a good couple of queefs and some semens, and they might be mild-mannered folk who can't talk like that around their uh, PR person or HR. <laughs> And I think we get it out for them. Yeah, it's great. Oh, by the way, oh, I forgot to mention, we talked about it in the queef. I listened to the Marin Seinfeld. Oh, baby, what a what a pod that was. That was that fantastic. was killer, killer, fantastic. I, I texted him about it, and I'll I'll tell you that off air. All right, I can't wait. Well, I mean, I thought it was fantastic. I thought they both made their points i thought they were both were equally fascinating and annoying and interesting yeah. and um just a, a great interview. prodding yeah a lot of prodding a lot of poking a lot of like what and then him being like no that's what i heard and he's like oh i hate you and he's like i thought you didn't like me he's like well maybe i didn't i mean it was it was a rootin' tootin' good time lunch yeah, and it was great because the conversation was like both sides of my head. I, I feel yes. like so much. I agree with both of them so much, and I felt like they both were a little short-sighted on things, and they both were really smart on other th- whatever. I, I'm not articulate, but I thought it was great. And so uh, check it out. Check out Marin talking to Seinfeld. I feel like if you're a fan of this show, you'll enjoy that very much. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time. And uh, I'm trying to get the guy to do Rogan or one of the other ones because – he obviously hates doing them, but I think he's in COVID and in quarantine, so he's like, ah, I can't do comedy, fuck it. Yeah, well, it keeps you relevant, and he's also so interesting to hear talk about stand-up as much as he frustrates me sometimes. He's yeah, like, yeah. you know, one of the greats, well, obviously. Yeah, no one's thought about it. It seems like no one's thought about comedy more. Maybe Quinn or somebody like that, but... he I mean, he could do a, what do you call it, a thesis or a doctorate. In stand-up, I think. And how excited are you for that book? He's got a book coming out in September. I don't, I don't, I'm not getting excited about that. The book's going to be 18,000 things you heard before. You know, I started Catch a Rising Star. I was a massive peak. It's going to be all the same shit. Maybe, I maybe. We'll, I have some hope, but yeah, I definitely think like the first third of that interview, I could have answered the questions for him. Exactly. And, you know, I love the guy and Larry Davis the same way where it's like, Oh, he's on Stern. Well, here we're going to hear about how he went on stage and the crowd hated him, so he walked off stage too early. You know, come on. Yeah, but check it out. Great listen, and uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it. But thanks that's- for listening, folks. We love you. We're very grateful. Yeah, God bless you. You're keeping us uh, afloat, and uh, tell a friend. Let's uh, spread the love. I've been putting up YouTube clips. I see, hey, any Tuesdays here? Tuesdays Unite. Do yourself a favor. Check out the Tuesdays with Stories fan page on you on Facebook. That one's cooking, too. Yeah, check it all out. Instagram, we got to follow the Tuesdays with Stories Instagram. Oh, it's yeah, up there. We're yeah, putting clips yeah. up there, the Twitter. Oh, yeah. Here, here. Well, yeah, go gay, kiss your dad, and uh, blow my aunt, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you in a week, and we'll see you on the queefs if you're Patreoning it up. All right. George is saying cut it. Praise Allah. Take it easy.